This is the coding project that I'm building to get into Fang next year, and you could steal it if you want to. I even had a senior software engineer at Microsoft review it, and I'm gonna break down everything that he mentioned in this video. First of all, you will not be getting hired if you build a generic coding project like a calculator or even an e-commerce app. You need to build something that will stand out on your resume. This means building a unique coding project that has these three things. It solves a real world problem, ideally has a user base, and most importantly, follows the entire software development cycle. Today, I'm not only going to show you what I did and why it works, but I'm also going to show you how you could do it as well and how I hosted it online completely for free for anyone to see. I'll also quickly teach you what the software development cycle actually is and how I implemented this into the coding project because it's probably the reason why you're not getting hired. Very briefly, the software development cycle involves the entire process from start to finish of building a software. This includes everything from design and implementation to testing and deployment. The reason why it's so important to build a coding project that follows every single step is because companies want to see that you could build professional software. And bonus, when you mention that in your technical interviews, I guarantee you, you will stand out so much and it will increase your chances of getting hired. Now let's jump into the actual coding project. I started by identifying a big problem that needed to be fixed. So at my university, the exam schedule is absolutely horrendous. Like the fact that this is what a university with millions of dollars of funding decides to put out to their students is just beyond me. One of the best ways you could increase your chances of getting into these big tech companies is by building a coding project with the user base. And I knew if I solved this problem somehow, I would get some users in my coding project. So I moved on to gathering requirements and planning out the entire coding project. Now this is a step that a lot of people are too lazy to do and will skip, but before you start, you need to have an outline for your coding project. What is the backend going to look like? Where are you going to store your data? And how is the front end going to connect to the backend? I decided on a full stack application where the backend is built with Spring Boot, the database is a Postgres SQL database, and the front end is in ReactJS. By using these in-demand technologies, I'm guaranteeing that my resume stands out that little bit more when I apply to jobs. This step included planning out the user interface through Figma mockups and then figuring out what RESTful API endpoints I needed to implement. Now came the implementation phase, which is where the coding actually happens. So let me break down everything I did step by step. I started with the back end, which is everything that goes on behind the scenes. And I did this in Spring Boot. Spring Boot is incredibly in demand as a framework because so many tech companies run on Java. So I could not recommend that you guys learn this more. Now the backend consists of a model and three layers. The model itself represents the exam information, including stuff like the exam date, start time, location, and so many other things. The first layer is the repository layer, which handles all CRUD operations, meaning create, read, update, and delete in my database. So I set up the Postgres SQL database to contain all of the historic exams and then use the spring data JPA to map this to Java objects. Now, the service layer is where all your business type logic comes in. This basically means writing code to determine how your application should handle different operations. The most important part for me here was just writing get functionality for specific use cases. For example, if a user wanted to search through multiple exams all at once, or if they wanted to go through and look at historic exams, which I'll touch on in a bit. Finally, I built the controller layer and this layer is a bit complicated. So let me explain it to you. Imagine you're in charge of a library where people come in and ask for books. RESTful controllers are like the librarians that listen to what the user wants, go and fetch the information, and then give it back to the users in a way that they can understand. They use a system of rules like checking a catalog or something to figure out exactly what the user is looking for so they know what to return back to them. So when someone asks for something on my website, these controllers figure out where to find that info, get it, and then make sure it's in a format that everyone can use. After all of this, I built the front end, which is basically what a user sees when they enter my website. This was built in ReactJS, which is easily the most in demand for any front end development. I developed reusable components for different parts of the application, such as the exam list, calendar view, and a form for adding and editing existing exams. Most importantly, I integrated the front end with the back end API using Axios, allowing me to make get, post, put, and delete operations. In the final coding project, users can search for their exams and add it to a calendar where they could then export it directly to Google Calendar. Or if they're on their mobile device, they could export it directly to their Apple Calendar if they're on my website. 
Before releasing it to the public, I had to go through the testing phase. I started by simply adding JUnit tests into my backend for the repository, service, and integration tests. These tests helped ensure that every single part of my application was working as I intended to, from saving data in my database, to processing business logic, and then integrating different components. After I released this, I reached out to a McGill graduate who's now a senior software engineer at Microsoft. I asked him to criticize my coding project and it's absolutely insane how in-depth he went. First of all, he built McGill Enhanced, which is a tool used by tens of thousands of people that makes looking up courses and registration easier. My dream goal was to end up maybe collaborating with him and this is still a possibility at this point. So he gave me a list of things to either fix or implement if we're going to consider a partnership. It started off light with generic comments like this is a bit slow and you shouldn't be able to scroll here. It started to ramp up a little bit when he started to mention how my front end stores things in local storage as opposed to session storage, which is less efficient for my specific use case. Now, this is the crazy part, and it became abundantly clear for me just how much it takes to become a software engineer at these big tech companies. Not only did he test on two different devices, one on the Mac OS and one on the Windows OS, but he also tested across all different types of browsers, including Firefox, Safari, and Chrome, just to make sure the UI was consistent throughout. So I went ahead and implemented all of these fixes and this is the end product. First of all, I tailored the URL searching so you could go directly from our school's calendar to my website through his Chrome extension. Because his extension is primarily used for scheduling courses, you could also go through and look at all of the historic exam data. This way, users can see if a specific class has an exam and when it's typically scheduled. For example, this microeconomics course has an exam historically every single year on December 19th. Now that the project was ready for release, I worked on the deployment. I'm a student and I cannot afford to pay any more than I need to, so I'm going to show you exactly how I did this for free. For the front end, I used Vercel. All you have to do is connect your GitHub repository and it automatically deploys all of your changes. For the Postgres SQL database, I used Supabase because it's amazing, they have a great free tier and it provides authentication. And finally, for the back end, I dockerized my application and hosted it on Heroku. I know what you're thinking, Heroku is technically not free, but if you're a student like me, you could get the GitHub Student Developer Pack, which gives you GitHub Pro for free, which also gives you Heroku for free. Let's just say after all of this, my coding project was definitely a success. I had over a thousand users and I might even enter into a partnership with my university. So at the end of this, I built a coding project that has a user base, follows a software development cycle, and is in all of the most in-demand technologies, so it will make my resume stand out. If you have any questions or you want help on your own coding projects, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. If you're like so many other aspiring software engineers out there and you struggle to stay motivated, I built a community for this. This will give you access to resume reviews, coding project ideas, and my own mentorship amongst many other things, so I highly recommend you guys go join it right now. But most importantly, if you found any of this helpful, please just like and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.